This is my friend Taco Cat. Taco Tuesday is his full name. <laughs> and he's my friend Sarah's cat. She asked me, you know, she has some plants, and she asked me what plants are okay for pets. I have a dog, and my dog doesn't really care about the plants whatsoever, so I don't have to worry about that. But because this is a question I get asked all the time, I really do want to know what plants are non-toxic that are safe for both cats and dogs. That's what I'm going to cover in this video. All the plants that I list today are safe for both cats and dogs. Not all plants that are safe for cats are also safe for dogs. So with all of this, again, this is just... <laughs> This is just for information for you. If you are really, you know, gonna bring a animal into your home, you definitely want to make sure that you are double checking, double and triple checking. I double checked everything on multiple resources. I use the ASPCA resource, so I feel really good about it, but just double check. It turns out I have a lot of plants that are, <laughs> it's so fun to have a cat here. We really, really would love to have a cat, but we can't. It turns out I have a lot of pet safe plants. I was going through the ASPCA list and they listed a ton of plants that I do actually have and care for. So I thought that I would show you some of my own personal favorite plant safe, pet safe plants and um, give you a little tour of some of the plants in my house. So let's get going. Taco Cat is gonna kind of come and go make little appearances and we will get going. But first let's take care of a little business. I would love if you would go down there and hit subscribe and like while you're at it. I really do find that to be helpful for me and you'll get awesome videos delivered to you on Fridays, especially if you ring that bell, you'll be notified. So go ahead and do that now. Thank you. First up is my big old parlor palm. If you have followed me for any amount of time over on Instagram, you will know that this thing has been giving me the worst run of mealybugs ever. It is fairly common for this plant, so just beware of that. But they are pet safe. They are non-toxic to our pets, which is awesome. And they also come in just a variety of different sizes. Obviously mine is pretty large and it will get bigger, but they do come in little small sizes too. So it doesn't have to be a great big statement piece, but if you are looking for a cat friendly, dog friendly statement piece, a parlor palm is a really good bet. You just have to be on them for spider mites. I try to take mine into the shower um, every other week or so. If I don't, those spider mites, they come rolling back real quick. So you just have to really be sure to stay on top of it. The next up is my Maranta. And this Maranta and all the Marantas in the Maranta family are non-toxic, which is awesome because there are a lot of different Marantas. And you can see this one desperately needs to be trimmed. <laughs> These there, a lot of the under foliage is starting to turn and fall away as is normal. You don't have to stress about that. They just, that's just their natural progression. These leaves on the marantas don't fall off very easily. Like you really kind of have to work them off. So that one actually came off easier than I thought it would. So while we're at it, I'm just gonna do some snipping because somebody left the, somebody left the closet open. You see my closet? That is not supposed to be there. Oh. I live in a house with a bunch of people that I do. Okay, so now you know what the inside of my closet looks like. Uh, <laughs> it's okay, it's, it's fairly well organized right now, so you know. Uh, I'm just gonna trim here. Um, Marantas are really awesome. This one sits in my hall bathroom, and I don't know if you saw it over on the bathroom tour I just did a couple weeks ago, it's right here. It sits with a lot of other Marantas and Calathea, and it does really well in there because of the humidity. So if you're looking for a bathroom plant that is pet friendly, oh, I see you, hi buddy. <laughs> That's pet friendly, the Marantz is the way to go. Now, you'll see that some of my leaves do have a little bit of browning. I swear, if you can find someone who has a Maranta or a Calathea that don't have any brown tips, just enthrone them because they are a plant god. It's uh, virtually impossible for me. And it's probably because they are a little underwatered right now. You guys, it's hard to take care of a million plants when you have a million plants. Oh, hi. You wanna say hi? Oh, you're so cute. Oh, oh, 
that's right. So Marantas are great choices. Now that's not to say that the cats aren't going to chew on them. Look, cats may still chew on the leaves and get some like stomach upset. So I'm not saying these leaves won't be chewed on. I'm just saying if they chew on them, they won't be poisoned. Lots of the plants are irritants and they might have some symptoms of some stomach irritation, but it's not you know, going to kill them. So just be aware that your plants still might get chewed on by your animals, but you definitely wanna choose safe ones. Another super popular, very, very popular, and it has been for like decades, the super popular house plant that is non-toxic is the spider plant. <laughs> this cat is just staying right out of the camera. Hi. Oh, does that look fun? This is a safe plant. You can play with it. <laughs> the spider plant is non-toxic and they're so fun. They'll give you new spiders. <laughs> oh man, this cat is cracking me up. Uh, they'll give you new plants that will just come right off the top. And I don't know if you've noticed, but my plant is looking so much better. I don't let this thing dry out anymore, although it is a little bit dry now, so it does need to be watered. But I make sure to water it with distilled water because these are more sensitive. The browning tips tend to happen with water that is not treated or um, not distilled or reverse osmosis water. So we do have RO water. I do water this one with the RO water because it does seem to help. I also put it closer to the window and guess what, it liked it, most plants do. <laughs> it's probably good, I don't have a cat, I don't think I would get anything done ever. I want a cat so bad. No, don't eat it. <laughs> One group of plants that I was really excited to see on the non-toxic list were the Hoya family. The Hoya family! If you don't have a Hoya, my goodness, get on it because they're such easy care plants and they are non-toxic, which is awesome. Over here I have a Shepardii and a Hoya linearis. They both sit here in the southern window and they are super happy, although they didn't bloom. Taco Cat and I are waiting for them to bloom. They are really, really happy. Where are you going? Oh my gosh. Uh, they're really, really happy here in the southern window and I love, love these plants so much. The Linearis obviously is so cute and soft. Again, it's a hanging plant, so you know, maybe it'll be fun for your cat to bat at it, but it's okay if they get some. Hoyas are now becoming easier to find, which is awesome. I have seen them at a couple big box stores and they're definitely becoming more popular. So if it's been hard for you to get your hands on a Hoya, now might be the time. Get out there looking for it. You guys, peperomias are on the list. They're on the list. Isn't that great? Peperomias. I love peperomias. I have a couple. One in particular. Okay, don't judge. This guy is so ugly. <laughs> and it's kind of the least cared for plant in my entire collection. It's so, It's it's been with me. It's grown so big. This has recently had about of the thrips and um, they really did a number on the leaves. You can see underneath, they're really beat up. They're really sad and kind of scabby, or maybe you can't see. It lost a ton of leaves here, but it was so tall and full. I'm getting, getting ready to make some trims on it. But anyways, the peperomias, I have, let's see, whatever I have over here. Peperomia Hope, which just recently started getting some growth finally it was very calm all winter and to be honest this isn't in the best light this really does need bright indirect light and i have it in kind of like medium ish so i do want to i do want to prioritize it because these are so pretty when they are full and hanging they're just so so pretty this one i'm committed to you you're gonna get more light another one of my bathroom bathroom plants is the calathea my all of my calatheas live together in the bathroom i have I don't know, four or five different varieties in there, but this one is my Freddy, and let's see, Ornata. Ornata, it's not doing so hotta. Speaking of mealybugs, got a bout of the mealybugs, and I don't know if you can tell, um, ah, you really can't in this light. Trust me, it's there, It's kind of sad. See how it's kind of modeled there? It, But it's, it's um, bouncing back. It's doing better, it's gonna live, it's gonna thrive. Mealy bugs and spider mites be damned. Calathea as a group are also safe, which is awesome because there are so many different kinds of Calathea. You could really go crazy with Calathea and have a whole house full. 
Now I like to lump the next two together because they're very similar. They are the epiphytic succulents and these are some of my favorite plants. Obviously this is a Christmas cactus. Maybe it wasn't obvious, but it is. These get beautiful. Oh man, they're so dusty. You guys, I just wanna show you because I don't take the best care of my plants all the time and I just want you to know that. Plants are really resilient and even I don't take the best care of my plants all the time. So, you know, for what it's worth, be, be free, be free, no pressure. This one, um, <laughs> this leaf most definitely got stuck in a window. Anyways, at the end of the fall, these things will start to bloom. There's little blooms that come off here and they're just beautiful, beautiful flowers. And it's some of the only plants I have that bloom indoors. So I love that. And then my Rick Rat Cactus, <laughs> it has grown really long. There's some very, very long pieces and I'm really, really happy with it. It's super thin on top. That's just kind of how it is. I'm having a hard time propagating into it because the rick rack will rot. <laughs> that's really hard to say. The rick rack will rot really easily. Whew, that's a mouthful. I haven't had good luck with just propagating back in. So what I'm gonna do next time, I'm gonna propagate separately and then I'll repot with everything together. For my honorable mentions, my honorable mentions are plants that are non-toxic, that are pretty popular right now, but that I don't currently have. The first one is African Violet. I know so many people who are getting in to the African Violets and good for you. I just haven't done it yet. Again, I'm not big on flowers and the foliage of the African Violets kind of, eh, I'm not super into hairy foliage either. That's why I'm not really a begonia fan. I know. I know that makes me really unpopular right now. African violets, I haven't really got into them, but I know that they're so fun to grow and propagate and I know people really, really get into them. There's whole like African violet societies and fun things to get into. So good news, they are also pet safe. Ah, last thing I will mention are herbs. I know lots of people grow herbs indoors and despite the fact I do have a basil sitting right here, it just hasn't made its way outside. And speaking of my counter, do you see? It's like Hawaii exploded in here, which is nice because I could use a vacation. This is the closest thing I'm getting to a vacation right now. It's all the flowers for my children. I want to mention herbs because if you are keeping them in the house, which I don't because I don't have enough counter space, you really want to be careful. Not all herbs are safe for cats and so you really, really want to be careful and be sure that the plants that you are growing inside are safe. Basil, rosemary, thyme, those are some of kind of like the ordinary herbs that lots of people do grow. Those ones are safe. However, lots of them are not. So just double, double, triple check. I have included a list to the ASPCA website down below the list. Now be sure when you're reading the list that you're looking, it includes toxic and non-toxic. Make sure you're reading under the correct heading. If you're just scanning through, you might miss that the heading changed. So it's all on the same page. Just be really, really careful. Also, I'm sure you have it because you are probably a really cautious pet owner, but I have some poison control numbers that you just might wanna have on hand in case something does happen. You definitely wanna know what those numbers are. They're included in the notes below. Thanks for coming along with me and Taco. Taco doesn't seem to want to be, could you come say goodbye? <laughs> Taco says goodbye. You could tell he's really, I think he'd rather explore and try to find all of my plants. Thanks for coming by today. I really appreciate it. If you are an animal lover, if you have pets, please let me know what plants you have. I know I definitely, this is not an exhaustive collection. I don't have all the plants. So let me know what your favorite non-toxic plants are in the comments below. Head over to Instagram. Go ahead and follow me over there. Have a good time throughout the week doing different planty things. You kind of see what I'm up to as I garden inside and outside. And if you haven't subscribed, now's your chance. Thanks you guys for being here. I'll see you next Friday.